Okay, this is a meeting of the Glen Ridge Board of Education. We began with our executive session. We will now proceed into the public portion of our meeting. We had no written communication this week. Uh, the president's report, um, I wanna welcome everybody to our first remote meeting. Um, many other boards around the state have already done this and with varying degrees of success. Um, the New Jersey Assembly even had its first online session 10 days ago. We're going to try as much as possible in this meeting to follow our normal procedure. Um, before we go ahead, I want to take a moment to uh, remember Eileen Ippolito's husband. Many of you know Eileen Ippolito, a teacher, longtime teacher at RAS. Uh, her husband passed away over the weekend. So please keep them in your thoughts and prayers. Um, I also want to thank all of our school personnel for carrying on in this emergency. Uh, they put together distance learning programs with very little preparation time and have continued to find new ways to educate our students. Uh, I want to thank the parents and the students as well. Um, they're all seeing more of each other than they anticipated and trying to meet the demands of jobs, education, and family life. And on behalf of all of us, I also want to thank the borough administrator, Mike Sakelli, Mayor Stuart Patrick, and the council, who, like us, are trying to find their way in on certain times. Um, and we also owe an enormous debt, of course, to our medical personnel and first responders for the care they take of our community. Um, I wanted to give you a little bit of an update on what's going on uh, governmentally because we look to Trenton and to Washington in times like this for answers. Some of those answers are available right now. Many of them are not available yet. Um, the school buildings, our schools will remain closed until the governor says that they can open up again. Uh, we expected maybe he would make an announcement to that effect today, but that did not come. So we'll continue to wait for that. Um, distance learning will continue with uh, spring breaks for most people until the governor says uh, that we can reopen. As you have read probably in the papers, the legislature has moved its tax filing deadline to July 15th and its budget deadline to September 30th. So what this means for us is that nobody has changed the budget deadlines for boards of education. So we still have to do our normal budget procedure and have our budget hearing on April 27th unless we are advised otherwise, but that has not happened yet. What probably will happen with the legislature is they will pass some bridge legislation that will um, make an appropriation to get the uh, state from July, uh, July 1st through September 30th. And then during that time, they will put together a nine month budget that will run from September 30th to next July 30th. What we don't know is what our state aid will be during that time. Uh, during the bridge period, we don't know if it will be the state aid that was uh, promised us in the numbers that came out in February or whether they'll continue the, the current level of state aid, the 1920 level of state aid. Um, when it comes to the nine month budget that they will cook up and pass by September 30th, we really don't know. Um, they're giving themselves extra time at the state level to see how revenues are, how long the coronavirus um, epidemic lasts, whether state revenues come back a little bit from that. So we really don't know for the next school year what our, what our state aid allocation will be. And that's problematic, but there's not a thing we can do about it right now. Um, Congress, as you know, recently passed a stimulus bill and um, that includes money for pre-K through 12, or K-12 schools throughout the country. Uh, New Jersey's gonna get about 310 million of that money. And it is going to be allocated, or I'm sorry, um, 310 million to help K-12 schools in transition uh, to online and remote learning. Another 69 million will go to an emergency education relief fund that will be split among school districts and colleges. And then another 1.15 million will come from the National Endowment for the Arts and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Uh, we're not sure those will probably go for arts and humanities programs, but nobody knows. Uh, the governor has some discretion in handing out the stimulus money. 
Uh, it's not anything anybody should depend on right now. It's nice to know it's coming, but it's, uh, we have to wait and see what the details are. Uh, there's also, um, those of you who've looked at the agenda for tonight will see that we have a resolution having to do with a bill that is pending in the legislature that would allow um, local municipalities to delay the payment of our property taxes, uh, the property taxes that go to support our schools. Um, what this would mean is that we normally get paid monthly uh, by the town and um, that during this time of emergency, this bill would enable the town to delay those payments. Uh, and, and we would then have to make payroll anyway. Uh, it also would enable the municipality during this time, if uh, tax revenues are not what they anticipated, to prorate the portion of those revenues that comes to the schools. So if the town only collected, say, 90% of the revenues it expected, we would then, our share would be prorated to 90% of what we had expected. All of, the, all of this can create big problems for all school districts, including ours, but it's particularly an issue for districts that are heavily dependent on the property tax like we are. So what is on the agenda tonight for your consideration is a resolution uh, opposing that that legislation. Uh, I have been working with representatives of other advocacy organizations to craft some amendments. The um, assembly bill passed uh, already. The Senate bill is being sponsored by Senator Sweeney. Uh, we're working uh, with his office on amendments to try to limit um, the damage to school districts. So that is still also hanging out there. Um, and I would say that as we receive guidance on all these uh, issues relating to particularly the state government uh, revenues and the budget, we will be back in touch with everyone. Okay, um, superintendent's report. Yeah, I would like to give you guys an update on uh, our situation with the extended school closure. Uh, just to recap it, um, when we last met was early March, and, and uh, at that time, we didn't know we were going to go into a school, school closure, let alone it would be as long as it is currently. Um, but we had anticipation uh, that there was going to be some issues coming up, and then there was a potential of, uh, us, of the schools closing down. Um, you know, the administrators met several times to discuss that, the impact, the academic impact that uh, impacted our facilities. Um, we brought in uh, the director from the local Department of Health to have a discussion where we are at, um, how we could best handle the situation moving forward at that time. Um, and I continued to uh, collaborate with uh, uh, several local superintendents, um, sharing ideas and um, just trying to stay on top of all the news that was coming out. Um, when it was clear that we were gonna have to close our schools, um, our administration uh, started meeting with the teachers to start planning for that. And, and what happened was um, quite impressive. Um, the commitment um, during this transition period was, was terrific, where um, the teachers and administration, they were creative, they were col uh, collaborative, um, their, their dedication and professionalism just shined through. Uh, it's one of those moments that, you take a step back, it, it just filled, uh, fill, fill you with pride. And I was very uh, happy. It was unfortunate we have to go through this, but um, the response by our faculty has been tremendous. Um, but we also had to look at the operation side of things where um, prior to closing, we we're already canceling some functions, uh, propose, uh, pro postponing functions, uh, such as overnight tr uh, field trips, uh, the mid middle school musical trips, uh, in all preparation of uh, trying to limit large group gatherings. Uh, we took a look at our uh, facilities and how we could keep them clean while uh, our students in, um, disinfected it, while our students were in, staff were still in the building. Uh, but, and we had to start looking at business operations. Uh, how, if, if we are gonna be closed, how are bills, payroll and delivery is gonna happen? Um, and um, the, the technology component of making sure the technology was up and running that if students at home had issues, whether it was um, access or devices or whether uh, they needed repair of 
the school device, we had to make sure procedures were in place and everything came together. Um, first day, day one, we were up and instructing. That was on March 16th. Uh, two weeks quickly turned into uh, five weeks of being shut down. Um, and once we knew we were gonna be extended shut down uh, after those two weeks, our teachers started making more and more adjustments to their instruction. Um, the biggest adjustment probably happened at their lower elementary level where those students uh, don't have the same level of technology. It's just not infused as much as you would expect in those grade levels. And, um, and the instruction had to accommodate that also. Um, at this point, we're cognizant of where we are with our students and their social emotional well-being. Um, being removed from peers, from interaction, um, possibly isolation, uh, the daily news, anxiety, uh, fear-driven um, situation. Uh, we're making sure that our, our teachers are sensitive to that situation, um, that they're reporting students who are not reporting into them or are not handing in work. Our counselors, our nurses, our administrators are all doing things to really address uh, that component of the student. We wanna make sure that they're as adjusted as possible and, and that's very difficult during these challenging times. As we start looking into proceeding into May, um, as uh, Betsy mentioned, the governor has closed schools, and I believe it was early last week, uh, his quote was, for the foreseeable future. We don't know what that means. Um, our, our school will be closed, and, and at least until the governor says schools can reopen. Uh, we're expecting that to be um, an extended time uh, beyond our April break, obviously, and we're hoping for an announcement um, this week so uh, people can uh, know what to expect. Um, in the meantime, uh, we're continuing to develop our virtual instruction. Uh, we are uh, gaining some instructional time with cancellation of state testing, some local testing, um, uh, canceling field trips, assembly school functions that, are ha that would have happened at the end of the year um, that may not happen now. Um, so I know there's some concerns about falling behind on the curriculum. I've uh, reached out to the building principals who have been talking to their teachers. Uh, they feel they're in a good point uh, place right now. And if we do have to be closed for the rest of the year, that uh, we'll be fine covering the curriculum. Um, and, and Betsy also mentioned that, uh, you know, the laws are, are quickly changing. Um, they are, seems almost uh, two or three a, a week that we're getting a new law and we're adjusting to that. Uh, just last week, uh, we finally got the approval to do some teleservicing, that, which allows uh, us to do virtual counseling, virtual uh, speech therapy, uh, occupational therapy, and physical therapy. So that's uh, those students who need those services will, are starting to receive them this week. Um, uh, you know, I'm frequently asked, when are we going to return to school? And, and quite frankly, <laughs> I, I, I don't know that answer. I do know that um, our staff will continue to deliver outstanding instruction the best of their ability under the given situation. And I do know when we're ready to reopen, our buildings will be ready and uh, our staff will be uh, welcoming the students with open arms. Um, the other component uh, I just wanna mention is our construction update. Um, at uh, Central Forest and Linden, we're 99.5% of the way there. They're finishing punch list items. Um, so I imagine within the week or two, they'll be uh, completely done. They have not been coming in uh, as frequently um, due to the uh, health situation. Um, and at Ridgewood Avenue, they are still uh, working on the chilling, chiller component of the HVAC project. Um, they were given uh, architectural punch lists uh, to work on, which is always a good sign when uh, the contractor is given a punch list. It means we're close to finishing. Um, and that's my report. Okay, thank you, Dirk. Uh, okay. Now it is time for the first public comment uh, period. We have some, since we're in a novel situation for us and for you in the audience, uh, just some reminders. Uh, we will have our two normal public comment periods at the beginning and the end of the meeting. Uh, the first one is for agenda items only. The second one is for um, anything pertaining to the schools. Uh, those participating by Zoom can offer comments using the procedure that I'll outline in just a minute. Those calling in just on the telephone 
uh, can't actually um, comment in real time, uh, we invite you to send any of your comments to dphillips at glenridge.org and we will get back to you. Um, as always, members of the public who wish to comment have two minutes in each of the two public comment periods. Um, if you have multiple comments, please state them all at the top of your comment um, so that we have them all. Um, questions really for tonight, uh, we will be, if you have them, please um, email them also to Mr. Phillips. Um, audience members attending, if you want to make comments, uh, the procedure is that if you go on your um, Zoom screen to the bottom, below the visual image that you see, you'll see an icon that says participants. If you click on participants, you will see, um, you will see, you'll be able to raise your hand. You click on the raise your hand and um, that will put you in line to comment. And Winnie Boswell, who is the host of this gathering, will, um, will, deal with the line. We'll mute and unmute people in the order that they have uh, come into the conversation. So that's what you do if you're on Zoom. If you get hopelessly frustrated and confused, as we all do with this technology every once in a while, please remember that you can always uh, send us your comments online. Um, and when you, when you are unmuted by um, Winnie Boswell, please give your name, verify your Glenridge resident, residence, and then go ahead. Um, and I should say that for those of you who haven't realized that already, uh, during portions of the meeting uh, where that are not public comment portions, um, the audience will be muted. So with that, are there any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? It, oh, yes. Um, can you uh, state, state your name, please? If they do agenda items. This is agenda items only, yes. Okay. Then I have to wait. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, we will go on with the meeting. Uh, with, oh, I'm sorry. The hand raised. Sorry. Okay. Fran has her hand raised. Okay. Um, go ahead, please. Hi, this is Fran Wong, 16 High Street, Glen Ridge. Um, in regards to the resolution you are voting on tonight for uh, regarding the, the taxes. Yes. And the payment from the town to the schools. Um, that impacted the district. I think it had something to do with um, our autonomy. But regardless, uh, legislature, uh, which was fairly successful, as I recall. And I wondered if that is something that the citizens could uh, help you out with this time? Uh, possibly, although it may be moved as quickly as next Thursday, so, uh, or this Thursday rather. So it, there may not be time, but thank you. Any other hands up? David, I see your hand up. Yeah, do you want that? Up? I had to put it up just so that I would, so I would get unmuted so I could. Oh, okay. Time it. Okay. So I, I uh, okay. That. Other questions or comments? All right. We will proceed with the meeting then. Uh, it is the first meeting of the month and we would normally have committee and liaison reports uh, by mutual agreement of the members of the board. We will only have reports that are uh, time sensitive or extremely relevant to our current situation. So does anyone mm -hmm. want to give a report? I will. This is Allie Lang. Yes, Allie. Can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. <laughs> okay, I'll give it a give it give it a shot. Um, 
you know, I just wanted to share um, with everybody uh, a few notes that I took from a virtual home and school meeting for the middle, Glenridge Middle School and High School on Friday the 3rd. Um, I just think it's relevant, uh, shows that there's a lot going on behind the scenes and I just wanted to share these, uh, these notes with all of you. Um, if anyone is interested, I understand that the uh, film from the Zoom meeting was uh, posted on the high school, middle school, high school Facebook page. Um, if you want to dig in and get the real nitty gritty, feel free. Um, but here are some of the highlights. Um, Home and School President Kristen O'Neill talked about the cancellation of the Arts Festival and Eco Fair this year. She talked about project graduation and the continuing Boone Supply fundraiser. Um, Mr. Lawler thanked everyone for partnering with the school during this challenging time and talked about how classes are being handled at the high school. Um, he discussed the upcoming spring break, the end of marking period three on Thursday, and the starting, um, I'm sorry, and grades will be released on April 24th. Um, they're starting to think about bringing activities and events back virtually and answered questions submitted via Zoom concerning graduation, SATs and ACTs, AP exams, Chromebook repair, uh, building access, sanitizing, canceled field trips, and the yearbook. Uh, Dr. Harris and Ms. Langraber talked about how they're addressing the socio-emotional piece of uh, the current situation and how they're adjusting plans for events um, and seventh and eighth grade schedule planning. Um, peer leadership and the middle school orientation. Um, and lastly, Rob Hill mentioned checking in with students regarding their health and well-being. Um, Rob Hill, the athletic director, um, and is really sitting tight to hear back from the state with news about um, spring sports and whether or not they uh, they will have an opportunity to you know do anything this year. And that is my homeschool report. Thank you, Sally. Other reports for the common good. Okay, uh, continuing with our uh, agenda, uh, you have minutes. You have minutes in your packet from the meeting of March second, exec session and regular session meetings. Does anyone have any uh, changes to those minutes? No. Okay. If that's the case, uh, Michael, would you move the minutes? <clears throat> Uh, he seems to be, seems to be okay. okay. I, can, I can, uh, I think I'm unmuted now. Um, I'd like to move M1. All right, may I have a second? A second. Second from Paul. Paul. Okay, any further discussion of the minutes? All right, Barbara, would you call the roll? Ms. Boyle Bellucci. muted as well. Yeah, she's muted. Oh, oh okay, she says yes. <laughs> Mr. Campbell? Hi. Mr. DeLue? Uh, abstain, I was, I was traveling. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, I was so excited that I was unmuted <laughs> that I said I, but I should abstain as well. Okay. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? She's muted. Ms. St. Auburn is muted. There we go. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. <laughs> Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, um, you have some administrative items. We have some administrative items. Um, David, would you move the administrative items? Move A1 and A2. Okay, may I have a second? I'll second. Okay, that was second from Heather. Teresa. Oh, I'm sorry, Teresa. <laughs> you, you, no didn't, worries. you didn't come right up on the screen. Uh, okay, know. that was a second from Teresa. Any discussion of the administrative items? Okay, hearing none, um, Barbara, would you call the roll? Ms. Boyle-Bellucci? 
She's muted again. <laughs> Thumbs up. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaros Ramos? Aye. Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Okay. Personnel items. You have personnel items on your meeting agenda plus an addendum. Uh, Tracy, would you move the personnel items? Uh, yes, I move P1 through uh, P10, which includes two items on the addendum, additions to P1 and P10. Okay, may I have a second? I second, Allie. Thank you. All right. In keeping with our rules, um, Personnel items are discussed in exec session. So if no one sees a reason to uh, not do so, Barbara, would you call the roll? Ms. Boyabolucci. Okay, aye. Mr. Campbell. Aye. Mr. DeLue. Aye. Ms. Lang. Aye. Mr. Romano. Aye. Ms. St. Auburn. Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos. Aye. Ms. Ginsburg. Aye. All right, we have um, some business items. Um, Paul, would you move the business items? Yeah, I'd like to uh, move items B1 through B16, as included okay. in the addendum. Yes, okay. Um, may I have a second? Second. Okay, any discussion on the business items? <coughs> no discussion? <coughs> <clears throat> All right, if that is the case, Barbara, would you call the roll? Ms. Boyabulici? I think you got an aye. Uh, Did you hear that? Okay. Yes. Mr. Campbell? Aye. Mr. DeLue? Aye. Ms. Lang? Aye. Mr. Romano? Aye. Ms. St. Auburn? Aye. Dr. Yaris Ramos? Aye. And Ms. Ginsburg? Aye. Motion carries. We've come now to the second public comment period for comments on agenda or other items. Uh, the same procedure applies. If you have a comment, uh, press the participants button on the bottom of your screen. Um, your hand will go up and I see a hand. Uh, Joe, uh, please go ahead. Yes, uh, Joe Marigliano, uh, Glenridge resident. Thank you. I am um, Keeping things in perspective given our great difficulties. Um, but I would like to follow up on my question from the last board meeting in which I asked when uh, structured learning experiences would begin. They're mandatory since 2007. I was told they would be beginning in the fall. I dutifully went to the program of studies as instructed by the high school principal and found option two which operates under a completely different section of the New Jersey Administrative Code than the structured learning experiences. Option two applies only to seniors, whereas structured learning experiences applies to students 16 to 18. And I believe Ms. Ginsburg agreed with me that the SLE should be offered earlier. In fact, I believe she told me between the junior and senior year. Those are just some of the differences between the two. There is no mention at all in the program of studies of structured learning experiences. There are other differences, such as the variety of career opportunities in the 16 clusters and the type of supervision. So my question remains, when are structured learning experiences, which are mandatory, going to begin in the Glenbridge School District? Please. Thanks, Joe. Uh any, any comment on that? I think we probably have to, given our current circumstances, Joe, we probably have to get back to you on that. I'll get back to you this week. Pardon me? When can you get back to me, please? I'll get back to you this week. By email or letter or what? By email. Okay, thank you very much. You're Thanks, welcome. Joe. Other uh, comments? No, I don't see any hands raised. Anyone? All right, uh, that being the case, thank you for all for, uh, may I have a motion to adjourn? Move. Motion. Okay, I think uh, I heard Michael and Paul. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on this uh, first um, 
Zoom adventure. Uh, I don't know how many more of these we will have to have, but I think that we will get better and better at it. So thanks to all, and especially thanks to Winnie Boswell for putting it all together. Yes, thank you, Winnie. Thank you, Winnie. Thank you. Stay safe, everybody. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.